Councilmember Durio. Here. Councilmember <coughs> Getz. Present. Councilmember Turner. Present. Councilmember Felshaw. Present. And Councilmember Neal. Present. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon, Mayor, Council, City Manager. This is our weekly uh, COVID update. Last week, when I was before you, we had some good news to report of the major decline in the number of cases. And we are still continuing on that track. So things are looking good. Last week, the week of October the 5th through the 11th, we had a number in Jefferson County, we had a total of 253 new COVID cases. This week, October the 12th through the 18th, we have 193. So the numbers are going down. Same time last week, we had 15 deaths in Jefferson County. This week, we have five. Uh, but what's concerning uh, is the percentage of school-age kids testing positive. Last week, it was 24%. This week in Jefferson County is 26%. So that's kind of concerning right now. Uh, hospital census. Last week we had 51 patients in the hospital. 94% of those patients was unvaccinated. We had 15 people on vent. 100% of those people were unvaccinated. This week we have 33 patients in the hospital. 85% of the 33 is unvaccinated. We have five people on ventilators, and 100% of those people are unvaccinated. So what we see in our uh, COVID report, even though the numbers are going down, which is a great thing, is that what's really common and consistent is the unvaccinated are the ones who are mostly at risk. So that's why we still want to encourage people to get vaccinated. And more so, not only to protect ourselves, but to protect the most vulnerable that's among us. We all live around, have people in our family that are elderly, of age, have severe underlying health conditions. So we need to consider protecting them as well as protecting ourselves. And I just wanna commend council and the citizens who have been really following the public health guidance. Uh, as a public health director, I really thank you because you're contributing to the decline in these numbers. So again, we need to continue to practice these public health measures. You know, the holiday seasons are uh, approaching and you know, we want to gather, we want to uh, fellowship with our families, but let's be wise and be smart. If we're gonna be around a crowd of people and we definitely don't know their vaccination status, we need to continue to wear our masks. We need to continue the social distance. So let's continue to practice those public health measures. And now in with this has been a lot of questions about the Moderna booster. Right now, the FDA panel has recommended the booster for Moderna, but that's just one process or one step in the process. So now CDC is reviewing that data this week. And once we receive approval from CDC and the guidance on who's eligible to receive the booster, then we will put, put out a PSA for the citizens to know when we will start administering the uh, Moderna booster, but we are prepared to start administering that booster. So we're just waiting on guidance from CDC. And so that's our weekly update. Any questions? Mr. Coleman, um, if, the, if you had Pfizer, can you have the Moderna booster? Right now, the recommendation is to stay with what you received the first time, but CDC is, is in consultation with uh, mixing the uh, vaccine. But I think it's more gonna be more to, if you've had the Johnson & Johnson as your first dose, that you'll be able to take the Moderna and or the Pfizer. So right now we haven't question. received guidance on that just yet. So right now the recommendation is to stick with what you had previously. Okay, uh, does our city health department have the booster, and if not, when will we get it? We have Pfizer and we have Moderna. We are prepared to start administering the booster for Moderna. We are currently now administering the booster for Pfizer because that has been approved by CDC. Okay. Thank you. Anyone have any questions? Anybody? Okay, thank you so very you. much. We appreciate the report. As you've heard, uh, the numbers are steady going down, which is great news, but 
We would also like to continue to con encourage each person to please get your vac vaccine for COVID-19. Thank you. Now is the time for any citizen that would like to speak on the consent agenda, items one through four. If you have not already do, done so, please fill out the green slip to the back of the room, hand it to the clerk to the right of the room, and she will call your name. The green light will come on, you will have three minutes to speak, and the red light will come on at the end of your three minutes. Um, Jess Prince, 3370 Esplanade, Beaumont, Texas, item I on the consent cultural arts. Thank you. Good afternoon, Mayor and Council. Uh, my name is Jess Prince, and I'm here on behalf of the Downtown Beaumont Cultural Arts District. I'm the president of that organization, and I'd just like to thank you for renewing our contract and for your continued funding and support of our artists' community. Thanks. Thank you, Jess. Before you leave, could you just, um, for people that are watching, please tell them some of the things that you've recently done? Absolutely. Uh, we recently, in June, did our first Make Music Beaumont. Make Music Day is recognized annually throughout the world on June 21st, but we did a three-day weekend, and so we were awarded grant money to pay local musicians um, to perform for three days throughout the city. We plan to do that annually. We also have been in a feasibility study with ArtSpace, which is a downtown, well, typically downtown, but they're a nonprofit developer. And so we were looking into developing <coughs> residential housing for our artist community here locally downtown. And we uh, just wrapped up the second phase of that, so we hope to have our findings published within the next month. And I see some other ladies in the back. You have yes. some. Yes, uh, some of them work with that organization, but I believe they're here to thank you on behalf of other organizations on Consent Agenda. Okay, thank you so thank very you. much. Um, Carol Gray, 505 Orlean Street, uh, Beaumont, Texas, Beaumont Main Street. <coughs> Hello, Carol. I know most of you, and you're probably thinking, Carol, Beaumont Main Street. I've retired from the port, and I'm so excited. I've been a volunteer with Beaumont Main Street for over 20 years. As you all know, the organization's been around for 29 years, so that kind of makes me one of the old folks. But I'm very proud to represent the organization today, and Tom Bell, our director's absence, he's on vacation, a well-deserved vacation after our very successful Dogtoberfest that we just are still recovering from. So uh, thank you on behalf of our board of directors, Tom Bell and myself as the new director of community development. Thank you for believing in us and for renewing our contract. And we look forward to continuing to do great things for downtown Beaumont. Quietly behind the scenes, we're working on a lot of projects. One of them is our uh, association we continue to have uh, with the Historical Commission and the downtowntexas.org, which is the website that promotes the uh, downtown properties. And we have developers calling and wanting information. And we've started a new process of reevaluating those properties and updating our inventory. So you'll see new things and great things to come as we update that website. In addition, we've joined forces with a lot of other organizations and people who are wanting to get the Battleship Texas here in Beaumont. So we're trying to put together a fact sheet, and so you'll see more about that soon. So thank you again for believing in us and our mission, and thank you for all your support. Thank you. Uh, Sue Bart, 700 North Street, Beaumont, Texas. Adam J. on the consent, Southeast Texas Arts Council. Good afternoon, and I'm happy to come before you today to once again thank you for your longtime support. <clears throat> we at the Southeast Texas Arts Council appreciate the relationships we've developed with the city over the past several years. Established in 1975 to promote knowledge and appreciation of the arts and humanities <clears throat> in Jefferson, Orange, and Hardin counties, we've worked hard to earn your trust and support for our many activities. There have been a great many improvements in the downtown area in spite of so many natural disasters. SeaTac noticed the brick sidewalks, 
the approved landscaping, the bike lanes. The city has worked for many years to preserve the venues that support the activities offered by the Art Museum of Southeast Texas, the Symphony, the Beaumont Children's Museum, the Texas Fire Museum, and others. SeaTac was also paying close attention to what was going on at the state level and believed a great opportunity existed for Beaumont. The state had legislated that the Texas Commission on the Arts would be given the authority to designate cultural districts. At first, this meant little more than just some added credibility. But uh, a few years later, they established a large pool of funding, especially for these designated districts. <coughs> that first pool of money was for $5 million over the biennium. Um, we were not yet, we did not yet have a designated dis uh, district at that time and weren't eligible. So CSAC <coughs> set to work to put to group, a group of people together to create this cultural district, which Jess has just talked about here. Um, since then, last year was the first time we were able to apply as a cultural district. And we brought in a, over $45,000 came into the downtown area for these organizations. This year we're going to get about $40,000, which is a lot more than, uh, and a whole <coughs> pool of funding we never had access to before. Um, CTEC believed that the city of Beaumont already had a cultural district in downtown, so to us it was just a matter of applying and making it happen. Um, this, clearly the city did most of the work. CTEC uh, learned of the nonprofit development organization ArtSpace and devised a way to allow DBCAD to fund both a feasib feasibility study and a market survey. For the past two years, CTAC has subgranted the needed funds to DBCAD in an effort to bring further development into the city. CTAC appreciates the support it has received from the city, and we'd also like to think we're earning it. Thank you. Thank you. Ryan Smith, 600 Main Street, Beaumont, Texas. Um, item D on the consent, Texas Energy Museum. And good afternoon, Mayor and Council members. It's, uh, again, I think my 29th appearance before the Council to uh, thank you again for your support of the Texas Energy Museum. For some of our new uh, Council members, I know I haven't met you personally yet, but uh, I just want to tell you the museum has been a part of the downtown and partnering with uh, the City of Beaumont since 1990, uh, bringing history and science museums, uh, science programs to this area and to promote uh, our important uh, oil and gas industry in the area. So uh, obviously since uh, last meeting, uh, from the fall of 20 until uh, June of 21, we, were, had, we went on shortened hours, we were closed on weekends, but we did offer free admission during that time. But beginning in May, we reinstituted our normal visitor hours and our, visit and our admission schedule, and things were looking really good in July, right? Tourism to Beaumont was picking up, the summer crowd was picking up, and then we had that surge, you know, of another uh, a part of the pandemic. So our visitor counts kind of went down in August again. But we didn't slow down on doing programs because even with schools closed and uh, they were curtailing a lot of their spring field trips, our spring and summer education programs went online. So we did a lot of virtual programming uh, we did some hands-on science activities through our website. We did some one-minute virtual museum tours on our YouTube site. And we did a, a few uh, virtual Zoom classroom programs. So during all that time, we had about 12,000 virtual visitors uh, through those programs. Uh, this last summer, we also continued uh, collaboration with the Children's Museum and bringing Space Camp. We collaborated with the Art Museum of Southeast Texas on some tours through their summer camps. We also produced in November our first virtual energy symposium. Uh, that was on November 12th and a panel of energy experts from the Center for Energy Studies at Rice University, the U.S. Chamber of Commerce, and the American Petroleum Institute did a virtual uh, workshop with us that was promoted to uh, all of the industry partners in our area. Last October, uh, when Dinosaur Day and the, the Art Museum's Eat a Bug kind of went to a drive through program, we still had something like a thousand, I think we said thousand persons and 300 cars. So this year, we're back on target with our Museum Madness Weekend and Dinosaur Day, which will, be, will, fit, will feature uh, dinosaurs that have been created by uh, about 12 different public schools in the area. And these the art classes have kind of they're decorating the dinosaurs, painting them, being very creative. Those go on the lawn this, this week. 
And so we're looking for a whole new Dinosaur Day, whole Museum Madness weekend that uh, there'll be a whole weekend collaboration of all the museums from Port Arthur uh, through, through Beaumont. Uh, we've hosted some, uh, on, uh, some uh, uh, energy, uh, some industry training programs with Golden Pass LNG and Valero. And we also completed the reinstallation of some of our electronics this year, including those famous talking mannequins. We redid those. So, uh, and even this year, after having to reschedule our um, museum blowout three times due to COVID, we actually had a very successful event uh, in July with Trey Gowdy here at the Civic Center, and their staff was excellent. We also are partnering with the Terrell Library and putting all of our historical photographs online through their portal, which we know is a global type uh, access to historical photographs. So again, we appreciate the support of city council, the mayor, and bringing tourism to Beaumont and strengthening our tourism programs. Thank you very much. Thank you. Shelby Brannon, 2240 Calder Avenue, Beaumont, Texas, item H on the consent agenda at Beaumont Heritage Society. Good afternoon. My name is Shelby Brannon with Beaumont Heritage Society. We at Beaumont Heritage Society, staff and board included, are incredibly thankful for the renewal of our contract. With this, the John J. French Museum will continue its mission of fostering a connection to our past with an emphasis on local history. As the oldest fully restored home in Beaumont, built in 1845, the John J. French Museum is a shining example of early pioneer life in Texas and shows guests an intimate view of life in Beaumont before it was the booming oil town we know it today. With this, we will continue providing tours and events to travelers all over the state and nation. We would like to personally invite you all to our next event, the Pumpkin Walk, this Saturday, October 23rd from 6 to 9 p.m. at the French Museum. This is part of Museum Madness, which we're incredibly excited to be collaborating with other museums and cultural institutions on. This event is just one example of ways in which the museum acts as a conduit for creative learning and for people of all audiences, young and old, far and wide. Thank you again for supporting our mission and for ensuring that the John J. French Museum will be around for generations to come and enjoy. Thank you. Thank you. Troy Gray, 5550 Jimmy, Jimmy Simmons Boulevard, Beaumont, Texas. Hello. Um, that was 29th year for him, this one, first year for me. So <laughs> uh, I just want to say thank you. I'm the director of Spindletalk Lada City Museum. Uh, I have been here six years, but the first time I've applied uh, for this grant. So I just want to say thank you. There's a lot of really great stuff happening at the museum. This is one of them. Our uh, Christmas in Boomtown City and Lights is something that we've never done before. And we're going to be decorating the whole place with a lot of lights and uh, inviting school choirs to come to sing carols and a lot of other uh, exciting plans in the works. This is one of many different new events that we are trying. Uh, last week we went online with the coffee and spindle top if you haven't caught that go on our Facebook page it's a really in interesting discussion uh, we hope to do that four times a year we're going to bring a country life festival next spring and uh, a black gold bash uh, talking about innovation of spindle top and bringing out innovators today so a lot of really exciting things uh, with our Christmas in Boomtown we do hope to open late every night in December but but on November 30th, which is a Tuesday, we hope to invite all of you and a lot of others uh, to a special opening for that uh, event. So I hope you guys uh, come on that um, time. So anyway, very good. Thank you. Thank you. Lynn Castle, 500 Main Street, Beaumont, Texas, item C on the consent, the Art Museum of Southeast Texas. Good afternoon, Mayor Mouton, City Council. I have with me today my brand new PR coordinator, Casey Clay. So she wanted to meet you guys too and get to see what we do here. Um, I wanna thank you also for renewing our contract at the Art Museum of Southeast Texas. Um, I wanted to give you some stat numbers and let you know that two years ago, before pre-COVID, we attracted an audience of 48,000 people at the museum. This last year, our fiscal year just ended in September, um, we had 16,000 people, so it's dropped quite a bit, but we are optimistic and we're rebuilding. 
We did have 726 people from out of town, so people were still getting out and about. And we had 140 hotel stays related to museum events. Um, we did, we were able to navigate through the COVID by doing, as Ryan had mentioned, the drive through Family Arts Day. We actually had cars that were lined up all the way down Main Street, all the way down Calder to Magnolia at one point um, for that family day. And we ran out of supplies. So we were like, quick, run back inside and start putting more packets together. And what we did was we had hands-on art activities and then people had, uh, were, had a link to our website and they were able to get on to see videos of how to do the hands-on art activities. So we felt like we were being pretty creative and proactive in dealing with the COVID situation. We've also transitioned over to all of our meetings are now hybrid meetings. They continue to be until we're completely through the pandemic. It includes all of our talks. Um, we just had a uh, guest speaker in from Mexico City, uh, Marta Turok, this weekend. And that was, again, um, posted on Facebook. And we videotaped it, and it will be uploaded to our website. We appreciate the financial support that the city has given us over a long and very uh, productive relationship that we've had with you over 34 years since I've been there. So, um, but we also appreciate the in-kind support that we receive from you, particularly two gentlemen stand out in my mind. One of them is Thomas Ashworth, who is from the city, who oversees all of our building maintenance, makes sure that everything is running when, whenever we have a leak. He comes right over and gets it taken care of. He's taking care of a lot of elect electrical issues for us. And then also Kenneth Raggett. I don't know if y'all have noticed, but our grounds are significantly like 200% more beautiful now. They were pretty sad for a while, but now we have beautiful flowers out and he changes things with the season like the tulips in the spring. And um, we're so grateful of that. I, I love the flowers and they, it just looks so much better over there. Um, we are looking forward to a great new year with new exhibitions and Casey's gonna pass these out to you. Um, and then also an invitation to the Museum Madness. We just had, um, like I said, we just had our guest speakers in from Mexico. I'll try to hurry because I know that means I'm supposed to stop. So um, <laughs> anyway, uh, we are also looking forward to the Museum Madness weekend, which he is handing you there. And um, we are still generating good hotel stays. Uh, Carla Magna, our artist who is exhibiting in the main gallery now, is here from Tuesday until Sunday from Mexico City, uh, I mean, from Oaxaca, Mexico. And then our guest speaker was from Mexico City. So that's the first time that we've done something internationally. And so we're pretty excited about that. So please come over and see the exhibits. You've got uh, invitations to the openings and then also to the Museum Madness weekend. And then we're, we're doing some more adult programming. We're trying to attract more adults and families by doing like the gingerbread workshop, which will be coming up in a month or so. And then um, we have also have a book club. So if anybody is a, a reader, we've got the next book is, and it's free to anybody. It's all hybrid again. So if you don't want to come over to the museum and want to just join us virtually, it's Anderson Cooper Vanderbilt's The Rise and Fall of the American Dynasty. I don't know if y'all have seen a lot. We've got, it's gotten a lot of publicity on um, TV lately. We're also hosting quarterly Taste of the Arts, and that's where we invite a Lamar University professor to come over and deliver a lecture about the, it gives us, offer a, a different point of view about the exhibitions that are on view. So we have that coming up as well. And then we're hoping that the city, you guys will do, I mean, I'm hoping that COVID's good enough that we can do Mardi Gras again, this, uh, or that we will be hosting the big Mardi Gras celebration. I don't know where you guys are on that or where you stand on that, but we want to tag along with that. If we do end up doing Mardi Gras here in Beaumont, we want to have a Mardi Gras party over at the Art Museum too. So uh, thank you all for your time. And again, we appreciate your support. Thank you. Well, that's all I have, Mayor. And mentioning Mr. Raggett, uh, he and his team are right out that window working right now. I think they're putting uh, lights on the trees <laughs> thank you at this time uh, i will call for a motion for the consent agenda move to approve may i have a second, second. <laughs> is there any discussion yes council member neil thank you mayor so part of the consent agenda today several um, appointments to um, different committees uh, i was talking to council member turner and one of the things that i would like to request is that here in the near future if we couldn't have a workshop 
so that council can have a better understanding of some of the ordinances that have been put in place many years ago, dictating um, some of the appointments that need to be made to these individual committees. Because uh, I don't think the council as a whole has a very good understanding of that. Council Member Turner. Yes, sir. And the second, the second on that workshop, I'll definitely be in support of that workshop. But the second on that, even the actual dates in the calendar of the times the meetings will take place and where, so we can communicate with some of the new appointees, so we can be kind of completely transparent with them on what's going on. So I agree with the workshop to educate ourselves on it, as well as a calendar, so we can know the dates and time that all these different committees will be meeting and to take place. Might be best for the city attorney to lead that work session. He help draft those and some of them you have to meet state law some of them are required some are not some are council decisions but we'll schedule that thank you thanks any other discussion council member turner on the on the events that we just got do we just scan the qr code and it'll kind of tell everything that's going on all right thank you guys for putting it together i'm looking forward to this weekend all right Thank you, and it's also an opportunity. Um, is it posted on the web? Okay, thank you. Mayor, I have one other question. Council Member Neal. On G, uh, where we're buying some new equipment for the Lakeside Center, the what's the parameters to be able to use that facility to, or to be able to use the equipment there? Is that open to the public in general? Yes. Thank you. Any other discussion? All in favor of approving the consent agenda, please signify by saying aye. Uh, Any opposed? The motion carries. May I have the rating of item number one, please? Uh, Mayor and Council, item number one is an ordinance entitled an ordinance accepting the certified tax roll summary for the tax year 2021, fiscal year 2022. Providing for severability and providing for repeal. The tax code requires the tax assessor uh, to send a certified tax roll to us and to be approved by you, the city council. So the administration recommends approval. You've heard the rating of item number one. May I have a motion, please? Move to approve. May I have a second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor of approving item number one, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? The motion carries. May I have the reading of item number two, please? Item number two is to consider approving the purchase of two new ambulance boxes. The boxes would be purchased from Fraser Limited of Houston in the amount of $389,248. Uh, the new boxes would be mounted on new chassis. Uh, replacing two units that have exceeded their expected service life. The funds were budgeted in the capital reserve fund. The administration recommends approval. You've heard the reading of item number two. May I have a motion, please? So moved. May I have a second? A second. In a discussion? I have a question. I do too. Um, the city manager, could you please explain to the listening audience why we would purchase boxes to put on the chassis versus i think maybe better jeff harville is <laughs> our fleet manager can probably explain it better than i can you know why they divide it up between the boxes and the chassis and cheap whites in the back as well thank you you can get both those items from fraser but i seem to be able to get a better uh pricing through our ford fleet vendor which is silsby ford so I buy the chassis from them. I buy the box from Frazier. Frazier builds it, and then I send the chassis over to Frazier in Houston, and they marry the two up, and then we have our complete ambulance. Which is saving our city yes. uh, dollars. Right, right. Absolutely. And the end result is the same? Yes. Yeah. Council Member Turner. Mayor. Mr. Manager, if you don't mind, I think it's, it's good if we would have either chief, chief or this gentleman kind of explain exactly what the, what the box is. I had a few people who actually read the agenda who called me to ask what was it. So 
if we can get a little explanation. I know I called Chief earlier to get some clarification, and he kind of explained some good details to me that I think would be good for the public to know. Okay, Chief, you want to join me up here while he's coming? It's a 14-foot box. Uh, it has a auto load system in the back of it to help get the uh, stretcher up into the uh, box itself. It's uh, highly technical. There's there's an acronym that the EMS falls under. I can't recall the acronym at this moment, but it dictates the safety standards that's required in that box. Through the NFPA. Thank you. NFPA uh, and those those standards for that box <coughs> require the seat belts, the strengthening of the box itself. Uh, some of our older boxes are, are framed out of wood and then wrapped in aluminum paneling on the inside and out. These are framed in aluminum, and they're, they're, uh, they're structurally sound uh, more than the older boxes that we have. So they meet safety standards required through the uh, medical industry. In addition to uh, Jeff and us agreeing to buy the 14-foot boxes, uh, you get two remounts onto the F-450s. So at the service life of the actual uh, cab, you can remount that box onto a different cab, cost saving to the citizen, citizen by one. Any other questions? Okay. Thank you so very much. Thank you. All in favor of approving, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Uh, Any opposed? The motion carry. Item number three, please. Number three is to consider approving the purchase of three excavators for use in various city departments. Uh, one excavator uh, would be purchased for use in the Streets and Drainage Division. Uh, two excavators would be purchased uh, for use in our Sewer Maintenance Division. The total pricing is in the amount of $115,060.98. Funds were budgeted in the Capital Reserve Fund in the water fund the administration recommends approval thank you you've heard the reading of item number three may i have a motion please it's been moved and second any discussion all in favor of approving item number please three please signify by saying aye aye any opposed the motion carried may i have the reading of item number four please Mayor and Council, item number four is to consider approving the purchase of self-contained breathing apparatus for use in the fire department. Uh, this purchase uh, would replace uh, 10 complete units uh, with other related items. The equipment would be purchased from Municipal Emergency Services Incorporated of Houston in the total amount of $115,820.18. Funds were budgeted in the Capital Reserve Fund. We recommend approval. You've heard the rating of item number four. May I have a motion, please? So Move to approve. Second. It's been moved and second. Any discussion? All in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? The motion carry. That's all of our items. I would like to read. At the end of the city council meeting, the council will hold an executive session to consider matters related to contemplating or pending litigation in accordance with section 551.071 of the government code, Jefferson County, Texas versus the city of Beaumont, Texas, case number B198-481. At this time, we will have uh, public comment. I don't have any one, Mayor. I'm sorry, there's one. Oh, Nick. Okay. <coughs> I'm Nicholas Hunter, 9155 Mape Street, Beaumont, Texas. Thank you. Afternoon, Mayor, Council, staff. Uh, I am here today to announce that we are finally Ready to announce we are putting on a trunk or treat in Pearlstein Park. Caring About Neighbors Incorporated will be handing out candy. It is a walk-up event. We're going to make sure that the public knows not to drive to Pearlstein Park. It is at 800 Landis Street. It's at the corner of Landis and Smelker. And we will be handing out candy on October 31st 
between the hours of 5.30 and 7.30. We've partnered with um, North Point Church. They have one a little bit earlier in the day. They're going to tell their kids to just keep on coming down the road, walk up to the park, get some candy, leave. We've got some local sponsors that are also going to be providing alternatives uh, to just sugary candy, homemade goods that are going to be packaged and properly served. Um, but we have a lot of different sponsors for the event, so we want to invite everybody out in the community to come and attend. It'll be October 31st from 5.30 to 7.30. That's it. Thank you oh, for all that y'all are doing. Thank you so very much. That's it. That's it. At this time, we will have council member comment. And I will start with you, Mr. Duria. Um, just want to say, attended Oktoberfest this weekend. Had a great time. There was a lot of people out there. I think it was pretty positive. Also, we had our uh, joint meeting with uh, BISD last night, and uh, that was a positive event. Also, had a lot of good ideas discussed, and I'm, I'm glad that we all came together to talk about that because, as I said last night, the education and safety of our children is everyone's responsibility, and we got a lot accomplished towards achieving that goal last night. That's it. Thank you. Councilmember Getz. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, echoing what Councilmember Durio said about Oktoberfest, we had spectacular weather. Uh, I want to compliment Emily Wheeler and her team for uh, pulling off a great event. I think our attendance numbers were larger than ever, and uh, everybody seemed to be having a great time. Uh, the Dallin West Neighborhood Association meeting, normally scheduled for tonight at Rogers Park, has been canceled because that site is being used or the community building is being used for early voting which uh, I guess uh, they're, they're getting started on that so uh, we will not have a Dallin West Neighborhood Association meeting this month thank you mayor thank you councilmember Turner uh, first and foremost I want to say thank you to staff who put on Oktoberfest this weekend echo everyone else i also want to say it was a great job that we did with bsd last night i'm looking forward to the next meeting uh i want to shout out staff again uh they did a park improvement out there at sprout park they striped the football field the way this came about it was several local football teams little little league teams that are actually practicing in front of westbrook high school not on the football field so i want to say thank you to staff and council for being supportive of that because these kids are out there practicing and it just shows we have a vested interest to actually city of Beaumont to support it so I want to say thank you to staff because that's huge uh, tonight United Way will be picking weeds so if anybody wants to come out and help us garden tonight feel free to inbox me or text me I'll let you know the location and where we'll be at other than that just want to keep on doing great things in the community and looking forward to working with our council thank you council member Turner Councilmember Felshaw. No comment, Mayor. Thank you. Councilmember Samuel. No comment, Mayor. Thank you. Councilmember Neal. No comment. Mr. City Manager. October Fest was a great event. Um, I think it's the best one yet. Um, I was visiting with a citizen that normally comes up here often on Tuesdays, Steve Hoffman. I think most of y'all know him. I didn't know the history, but he told me it was his idea to have an October Fest. And um, I didn't know that because I think he brought it to a council member and a council member brought it to me and Lenny Caballero at that time put on that first event. And then Emily Wheel and her staff, Emily, I think she left, but they have even made it better. So it was fantastic and uh, just good for Beaumont, Texas. Thank you. Well, I would like to say that um, congratulations to a beautiful, beautiful Oktoberfest. It was we couldn't have asked for uh, more perfect weather. And to our great staff, um, it was excellent. Uh, the bands were great. Uh, the food had to be great because the lines were so long. You didn't even want to stand in the lines. It was so long. I mean, they were just down the, throughout the whole entire park. But um, it was a great turnout and um, uh, glad that uh, the citizens turned out and uh, we're much appreciative of all of the staff and all of their hard work uh, on last Tuesday um, I failed to mention and to give condolences to uh, our port commissioner mr. Lee Smith 
uh, who passed on last week. He will be funeralized this Saturday, and I want to send condolences to his family. Also, um, don't forget, this is Pink Month, and this is Breast Cancer Aware Awareness Month. I just want to keep everybody uh, abreast of uh, the awareness of Breast Cancer Month. And uh, we will have uh, the Breast Cancer uh, Awareness Celebration at the end of uh, this month out front. And um, we had a great, great uh, meeting between BISD and all of uh, the council's uh, city manager, city attorney, and our staff. Thanks for coming out. Uh, it was a long, long day uh, for our staff. But together, we are working together to build a better Beaumont. And hopefully, we will continue to work together. Because as we both said last night, those little citizens in BISD are our future. And working together uh, for the betterment to building a better city and um, making sure that all of our citizens little and older <laughs> are attended to. So uh, there were some great things that came out. Uh, we're looking forward to our next meeting so that we can work together for the better good of all of our citizens. So at this time, we will recess into executive session. Thank you so very much for coming, and we'll see you on the next meeting.